Hi, welcome back, and let's get to it. If you watched the previous video, you might now have a better understanding of what the Luma waveform represents in relation to an image. In this example, we have a fairly flat luminance range with some sharp spikes upwards when we reach the area with the sky. Let's remember this shape and turn on the RGB parade. And look, it's exactly the same, except this time there's three of it, one for each channel, and it's been compressed horizontally to make more room. It works exactly the same as the Luma waveform and allows us to see the presence of each color across the luminance range of the image. Three identical graphs generally represent a neutral image. I'm now going to open a clip that has an uneven parade. It might not look like it right away, but this is actually a fairly yellow image. And the reason I can tell you that is because if we look at the midtones range, so anything between these two yellow bars in this specific example, you can find that the red is more or less containing this brick wall area. The green is also kind of there. It's a little bit lower though, but the blue is visibly lower. You can see that uh, whereas this area is nearly empty for the red and a little less empty for the green, it's almost filled for the blue. And we know that on an additive color space, the opposite of blue is yellow. Using that deduction, there's two things I can do. I can either go into the blue channel of my curves and simply raise the blues. So as soon as I clicked on it, the entire graph just jumped up and I can now show you my before and after, and it's a very mild change, but it is a more neutral image than it was before. And that was a really mild adjustment. Look at that, I just barely moved that blue line. Now, the alternative thing I could have done is I could have used the color wheels. So then I could go to my gamma range and pull into the blue to reintroduce that blueness into the image and remove the yellow. The tricky thing about working with color wheels, though, is that they don't just move the channel that you're focusing on, they move all the channels. So if I turn off my grade and then turn it back on, that's the difference, and you can see that it's been neutralized quite nicely. Another thing that we use this technique for is for matching shots to each other. So I've got a wide shot of my talent in this clip, and then the clip cuts to a close-up. And at first glance, they look like they're matched up, but in fact, this close-up is warmer. So I'm just going to go back to the end of this clip, and what I'm going to do is grab a still, and then go to the close-up, and now I can double-click the still, and I can do this for comparison. If you look at the tree behind her, it looks almost grayish or bluish compared to the tree here, which is very green or yellowy. Look at her hair as well. It looks a lot more neutral and closer to white than it does here, where it looks really blonde and yellow. So what I'm going to do is use the close-up warm image as a reference for my match. I'm going to grab a still, go back into the wide, and turn on this reference. Now I'm able to click back and forth between my clip and the reference image, and I can keep an eye on the graph and start replicating the relationship between the red, green, and blue channels on this clip. So, for example, if we start with the highlights, I can tell that the red is the highest out of the three, followed very closely by the green, and then right behind there is the blue that's underneath the 640 line. If I turn this off and I start manipulating this image using my curves, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to keep an eye on the reds, and I can see that they're almost the same height as the greens, so I'm just going to pull it up a teeny tiny bit. The blues are a little bit too high, maybe a little bit too prominent, so I'm going to drop them a tiny bit, like so. And that's it. Then I'll turn the reference back on and see what's happening in the shadows. So the red and the green are even, just skirting the 128 line. Where's the blues right above it? So again, I'll turn it off and imitate the relationship on this image. Here, the three of them seem a bit more equal, I think. So I'll just lift up the blues just a teeny tiny bit. So I'm already seeing a much better match. Look at that. That's my wide and that's my close up. And if you just look at this area, which is what they both have in common, that is looking really, really matched up. So if I play it forward, it will now naturally transition from one to the other. Thank you very much for watching and until next time.